Like many young girls, she struggled with her self-esteem and desired to fit in. In seventh grade is when Megan had a really, really tough year. That was the year that Megan was really, truly just trying to fit in. And she just couldn't figure it out. And it's a tough year for a lot of children. In the beginning of her eighth grade year, one boy seemed to appear on Megan's MySpace account out of nowhere. How did Megan's online interaction with Josh Evans begin? She had a new friend request, and she looked at it, and it was a picture of a really good-looking boy and said he wanted to be friends with her. And Megan looked at me, and she's like, oh, my gosh, Mom, he is so hot. And I said, do you know who he is? And she's like, no. And I said, well, you know, then I don't think you should add him. Megan's persistence paid off. Tina Meyer reluctantly allowed her to accept Josh Evans as a friend. What did some of the emails say? They were instant messages and it was, you know, gosh, you're, you know, you're so cute or your eyes are beautiful, that type of stuff. Daughter. When did the emails get negative? When did they get nasty? The very first negative email of any kind came on Sunday, October 15th. I'm going to read this. Is that the email that says, I don't want to be friends with you anymore because you're not nice to your friends? Right. A confused Megan wrote back, but she didn't get a response. On October 16th, she went to school and handed out invitations to her 14th birthday party. She'd already picked out the polka dot dress she was going to wear. At 3.20, Megan returned home and rushed to the computer to see if Josh Evans had responded to her MySpace message. Then she opens up the other message, and the message says, You heard me. I said you're not a nice person, and I don't want to be friends with you any longer. It was typically back and forth, you know, who are you talking to? Who's telling you that I'm mean? At 5 o'clock, Tina Meyer returned home from an appointment and found her daughter distraught. What began as Megan's attempt to understand why Josh Evans no longer wanted to be her friend had devolved into a barrage of insults with other kids joining in. All of Josh's friends, all of Megan's friends, calling Megan a whore, a fat ass, calling her all kinds of god-awful names. And I had said, Megan, you know what? I am really disappointed with the words and the language that you're using. Now, what's her reaction to all this? How is she feeling? She was crying, and she said, you know, you're supposed to be my mom. You're supposed to be on my side. Megan took off running up the stairs. Twenty minutes later, Tina Meyer got a horrible feeling in her stomach. I hadn't heard anything. Nothing. My heart dropped, and I just took off up the stairs. And I opened her door, and I just saw her hanging in her closet. That night, the Myers tried to contact Josh Evans, but as quickly as he had come into her life, he had vanished. What we saw were the last two messages sent from Josh Evans, which were, the world would be a better place without you and have a the rest of your life. Me, because people would be like, faggot, fag, and they'd taunt me in the hallways, and I felt like I could never escape it, and I made a form spring, which I should have done, and people would just constantly send me hate telling me that gay people go to hell and basically we live in a where 60,000 stay home every day because they're too afraid to go to school and uh, anybody who spends time in a school and talks to kids knows that there is a culture both of everyday cruelty but also of protracted campaigns uh, that kids cannot escape and when there are no rules at schools when there's no consciousness and when there's a denial of the problem uh, kids cannot be safe and they cannot study. Neutrality doesn't work. Um, I find the whole thing shocking. I mean, we don't send American workers to their workplaces in this country saying, just do your job and we're not going to protect you if something happens to you. Likewise, we can't send children to school in this country assuming that we're just going to teach you and we're not going to protect you if something happens to you. These are children. We're not educating uh, part of the child. We have to be mindful of the whole child if we really want to do justice to our education, our education system and to the young citizens of our country.